Hi everybody, today we look at a fast array serializer plugin that is actually using an array that will be replicated between client and server and is specially designed to handle a very large amounts of data and be quite fast in the replication. The whole project that I just showed is available on GitHub, so as always you can just copy it and clone it. As I said, it's based on this fast array serializer, so it's not a standard array that you use, this T-array that you normally use, but it's a special construct um, used by Unreal, so for example, in Fortnite, to be very fast replicating things. There are also a couple of events and uh, statistics functions on it to make it a bit easier to use. Um, cloning it is, for example, with Tortoise Git uh, simple, just copy the URL into the cloning, and then after a while you have this directory here, um, it's quite simple really, this is a, a kind of PowerShell script to delete the temporary files and here on the right click you can generate the Visual Studio files. If you look at the project, you see here in plugins this BA rep array, that's exactly the plugin that I'm talking about, the rest is just a demo product uh, project, so you can easily take that plugin and use it somewhere else, either with Blueprint, because it's all ex exposed to Blueprint, that's the point here, or you look at it from the C++ perspective. Opening the whole thing in Visual Studio gives you here this demo project, BA rep array demo, and here under plugins, the plugin with two modules. One is actually the replication array, and the other one is an actor component allowing you to add and delete replications arrays um, to make it a bit easier to use. Good, if you actually build it and run it, you should see that, um, yeah, <laughs> exactly the demo project that I showed at the beginning. Let's get it started. And here we go. Yeah, you find all things in the plugin directory. It should directly run without any hassle. And let's have a look at it. First, looking at the documentation, I have this website here, developerbastian.tech, where I have here under resources, this BA replication array and just the actor component, then an explanation of the fast serializer objects and the replication area itself. And here you see a couple of functions. They are events and functions that are either on authority or without authority. The whole thing is multiplayer um, designed, meaning it always splits the logic between things that run on the server side and things that run on the client side exclusively. And that is actually what you should do. So playing the whole thing as a client and always thinking what should happen on the server, what should happen on the client. Easy answer is everything should happen on the server if it's not something that has something to do either with interactions from mouse or keyboard or a GUI. So going back to the project here, as I say, here's the plugin and here you have the BA rep array content. Um, in the root directory, you have the map itself, you have the game mode. The game mode is interesting because the map is using it and the game mode is the place where you can exchange one of the, th of the two third person characters that we have here. The one third person character is actually the one that I used in the demo and the other one is, this is the min game map and the other one underscore rep is just for explanation of all the blueprint nodes that are there and some kind of uh, debug keys that you can use to understand the functionality a bit better. Okay, both are here. So these two we will have a look later. Other than that, you see a couple of assets like the meshes, uh, the PCG, kind of uh, creating this map here, and then some attribution because that's all CC4 from a license perspective. Other than that, we have these blueprints here that we collect. And now let's come back to one of these two um, third person characters. Let's start with the rep one. That is the kind of overview one that is just for debugging purpose. Here, for example, um, you bind to a couple of events. If you add this actor component to your third person character, the actor components will fire events. For example, when an replication array was added to it and you can react to it, for example, storing that reference in a local variable and making sure that that variable replicates to the client. So the moment I add a variable here, it will be set here to this variable and then it will be replicated to the client and the client then can use it. For example, here I'm reacting to that and binding events to it. So all these events here are running on the client side and they will be triggered the moment um, something happens with the replication array, like an object is added or deleted 
or your facade event or something like that. So all the things that could happen in the array are reflected in the events and you could take that to react accordingly uh, yeah, in your graphical environment, for example, or with messages and so on and so on. Other than that, you have here an event tick that is just really dumping out information every frame to see what is an array. It's again splitted between authority and non-authority. So we see exactly what kind of objects are on the server side, what kind of options are on the client side. And eventually we expect that they are the same, obviously. Good, let's change our game mode to the rep character. This character will not collect anything because the events are simple, not in, in the initialized here, initialized here, sorry. And that is a character that is just running via the debug keys. So from debug one to zero, you get a couple of events, like for example, creating new things just out of the air or adding things um, with a lot of time, so 10 times, for example, and deleting, sorting, all these things are really steered via debug keys and we will have a closer look into them what actually is available. Good, let's have a look here, um, switching back to the character and you see here um, what it is. It's always a debug key. Debug key means it actually would be ignored in a productive environment. It's just really, really for demonstration. Um, these are examples adding or deleting something. The important thing, of course, adding and deleting is server side. So um, we always trigger the whole thing on the client side with the debug key because yeah, keyboard interactions are client side. And then we call a script on the server side doing something. Uh, you would, of course, might insert something to validate that this client request is actually something reasonable. Then here we have five and six. These are sorting events, sorting by an index or sorting by a property. Then we have things like empty the whole array, so deleting all the objects in there, get an array count, so some statistics, get all objects, um, get special objects either by GeoID or by ID. Every object that you add to the array will get an GeoID for reference and also a kind of human readable name to make it a bit easier to work with, especially during debugging. So let's try it out. I put here a breakpoint on, on, on all of them. So debug key number one is just adding one single test item to it and um, yeah, starting to do some statistics like um, adding all the weights together, adding all the uh, densities together, whatever properties are found that are numeric are added together. Then number two is deleting a random object. Here's just one, so it deletes the one that we have. So the array is empty again. So meaning on the client and on the server side, we have a count of zero now. And that is something that we, of course, have to change a bit. Number four is adding 10 random objects to the array to get something to work with. You see now the, can, the count is 10. Number five is sorting the array. And it's sorting it with a, a, an, an, in, uh, an integer value. So it's quite, quite fast. If I do the same sorting, um, looking now at the property, the property weight, for example, it's much slower. Reasoning for that is that this sorting by property will sort even if the objects themselves are not equal and not the same. They are not somehow having the same interface. They are not something having the same parent. They are object that has nothing to do with each other, but both have the property weight. And we are the reflection system. They are actually compared and sorted, but it is slower than actually doing it with properties that are directly, directly accessible. So if I now sort with a bit bigger amount, you see now we are at 50 milliseconds and that is quite huge. So these are 200 objects. So we really have to think about how to implement that sorting to not um, yeah, skip frames with it. Emptying an array, you see a lot of events simply because for every single array uh, entry that was deleted, I get an event that I could react to. And yeah, let's add another couple of them. So now we are back to 11 and another 21. So here we get the count of the array, um, just printing out how many things are in there. So this is number, uh, the count is 11. Then we have some functions getting simply all the values that are currently in the array and iterating over it, doing something with it. So that is just dumping out the different weights for it. Then we have functions that are getting one special object out of the array, either via the, via the GeoID. I said that every 
single entry that you add into the array gets a unique identifier. That is on the one hand a GeoID, so a 32-bit value. On the other hand, it's a kind of um, um, yeah, human-readable um, random name. That makes it easier to debug sometimes. So let's have a look at the other character, the one that I actually used to um, collect these fruits in the in the beginning demo. Yeah, at the beginning um, we will we will um, trigger or we will um, adhere to an event that triggers the moment some um, replication area is added to the actor component. Simply because we want we cannot miss the point where we actually have a back to collect things. Otherwise, we cannot collect anything. So. If you have that back, it will be put into this local variable, BA info, and that variable will be replicated to the client. If we um, overlap with something, the first thing we will test if that is implementing a certain interface simply to make it a bit lower on the processing side. Only if that interface is implemented, we will actually react. And that interface is implemented by the back and by the fruits that you see here. If it's in back, it's actually adding a replication array to the actor component and destroying the component with some effects. And if it's a fruit, same thing, it's adding the fruit object to the array, destroying the fruit, and again, doing some effects. You see a, a small little cloud and stuff like that. So that all happens. So kind of same logic. The only thing is adding back or adding fruits to the back. This here is a dump on a tick. So every tick, we dump some information what is currently in the array and just do that actually here on the client side, on the remote side, not on the server side. So we iterate over all things that are there on the client side and print them out. So changing here the third person character pawn to the demo character, making sure that we play as a client and let's get started. So as we shown here, we overlap with the back, it's a back, so we actually put that into our array component. And now we have one replication array initialized and that replication array will now be used to collect more fruits. Same thing, the moment we overlap with it, if it's uh, implementing the interface and it's not a back, then it's a fruit. So we destroy the actor, we trigger at that point a small effect and some sound. And the moment that is done, we add that object to the array. And you see here the list of the objects that are currently in the array. They are all in the same array. They don't have a parent or something, but they can be compared and sorted and found. And you find them via either their instance GeoID or via the ID, what is just a human readable name. Okay, I hope that helps a bit. That's a start for this fast series array. And yeah, if you have any questions, just post them in the chat. Thank you very much. Bye.